hello students today we are going to talk in length about the hemoglobin estimation by the sellis method apart from sellis method there are other method also available by which you can estimate hemoglobin like helden method is there winstrop method is there and so on now the question arises why do we want to estimate hemoglobin to know all the cases of anemia okay now the anemia problem is a global health problem it is affecting all the age group for example it is affecting the young adolescent girl it is affect, affecting the pregnant woman it is affecting the postpartum woman okay now as per the who nearly 40% of the children between the age of 6 to 59 month of age 37% of the pregnant women and approximately 30% of women in the age group of 15 to 49 are anemic now this slide has been shown just to see what is the prevalence of anemia in pregnant women in india now the state name has been written and in the bracket you can see that the percentage has been given which is depicting the prevalence of anemia in that particular state and to combat with this issue the government of india has launched anemia mukt bharat the government of india has done survey in 2006 2016 and between 2019 and 21 to see the prevalence of anemia in india in various age group you can see from here that in various age group the survey was done and from the data itself you can able to see that the prevalence of anemia is is on rise now hemoglobin is been expressed in terms of gram per deciliter of whole blood now the normal reference value in adult male is 14 to 18 gram per deciliter of whole blood and in female it is 12 to 16 gram per deciliter of blood Now you can see that even RBC hemoglobin are less in female as compared to the male, and the primary reason for this is that testosterone in the male stimulates the process of erythropoiesis, and in the female, estrogen inhibits the process of erythropoiesis. Now, if there is a less amount of hemoglobin in is there. then anemia is going to happen and there are different classification of anemia we are not discussing here now if there is an increased amount of rbc is there okay erythrocytosis that means you are having large amount of abnormal hemoglobin now this hemoglobin is a intensely colored protein okay now in the cell is matter that we are going to discuss a little while from now what we do we put this color hemoglobin okay we take blood and this hemoglobin is been converted and into acid hematin by adding of n by 10 hcl acid so this hemoglobin is converted into a single stable compound which is colorful compound and this colorful compound is been matched with a color plate to measure the amount of hemoglobin present in your body will give a clue towards the diagnosis of anemia apart from other parameters but this hemoglobin also give you an idea related to the blood sugar for example there is a hba1c hemoglobin is there okay now the glucose is being attached to the b terminal terminal part of the hemoglobin Okay. Now this glycosylated hemoglobin, at one point of time, if you measure from the blood, it is going to reflect the average of the blood glucose in a period of three months. So it has been becoming a tool to know the blood glucose in patient of diabetic mellitus. One more another reason that why you should be knowing your hemoglobin values. If you know the hemoglobin value, you will be able to take out the MCH. What is MCH? Now MCH is the measure of the average hemoglobin content per red blood cell. 
and this MCH is going to guide you, guide you towards the practical classification of anemia. Okay. Now, if the values are between 26 to 32 people from hemoglobin per cell, it is known as the normochromic. If it is less than 26 picogram, it is hypochromic, and it is more than 32 picogram, it is hyperchromic. Now, if you know the value of hemoglobin, you may be able to take out this MCHC. What is MCHC? It represents the measurement of the hemoglobin or the ratio of the hemoglobin mass to the volume of the red cell present in your body. So, how to suspect a case of anemia? Okay, see, anemia is not a disease. It is due to the deficiency of either hemoglobin or RBC in your body. Okay, so some of the cases of anemia may be asymptomatic and it can all only be identified by through some blood test. Okay, now pillarness of the eye, okay, is the most important clinical sign but not it is visible unless hemoglobin fall to a very low level of 7 to 8 gram per deciliter of blood. Now, these are some of the symptoms that you are going to see in the patient. For example, the patient can complain of weakness while working in case of tiredness. Then the patient can complain of paleness, chin, fever, weight loss, shortness of breath, headache, dizziness, fainting, bleeding and frequent infection. Okay, so if you are doubting the case of anemia, you will have to look for the clinical sign and after seeing the clinical sign, if you are suspecting a case of anemia, we are going to do certain investigation for the confirmation of anemia. Now, these are some of the signs that you can look in cases of anemia. Now in cases of iron deficiency anemia, you can be able to see over here the shape of the need. It is concave in shape, which is also known as the spoon shaped nail. Usually you can find in cases of long standing cases of anemia. Now you can also be able to see glossitis. Glossitis is nothing but the inflammation of the tongue. Okay. Now you can see it has become brick red in color. Okay, you can see the smoothness of the tongue over here. It becomes very smooth in appearance. All these signs indicate toward iron deficiency anemia. Now, in this slide, you will be able to see in different age group over here, you will be able to see the values of hemoglobin as far as the mild, moderate and severe is concerned. Why you are segregating in mild, moderate, severe? Because the treatment will also vary as per the value of hemoglobin. If the value of hemoglobin is severe, it is less than 7, then the treatment modality is going to change. If it is mild, again the modality of the treatment is going to change. Thank you. Now, let us look for the practical part for the estimation of hemoglobin. Thank you. Thank you.
Kusi. Now, in the hemoglobin meter tube, you put N by 10 acid, SCL acid, up to the lowest mark, to the level of 2. Okay, and pour 0.02 ml or 20 cubic millimeter of blood from the pit directly into the hemoglobin meter tube and wait for at least for 5 to 10 minutes while you are waiting for 5 to 10 minutes so that all the hemoglobin is converted into acid hematin by the acid which is a color of compound and we are going to match this with the standard color plate now after waiting for 5 to 10 minutes you add distilled water drop by drop try to mix the hemoglobin water with the help of a stirrer until all the three glass tube matches the match okay when all these three tube matches take out the hemoglobinometer tube from the comparator box but do not take out the stirrer because if you take out the stirrer each time, each time, certain amount of fluid will also come out at it, which is going to hamper the hemoglobin reading. So never you should take out the steroid from the tube. You hold the steroid in a such a way in the tube that it doesn't come out of the tube and you hold the comparator box along with the hemoglobin tube in the natural light to match all the three test you. Once it matches, you take out the tube and directly you can see the hemoglobin value in terms of gram percentage. Thank you.